little show and tell about tool post drill chucks. As you know, or maybe not know, but I'll tell you anyway, I'm using the carriage and the tool post for drilling on the lathe pretty much for all my hole making needs on the lathe. There are many advantages to it compared to the tailstock. Like for deep hole drilling, you can retract the drill very fast. You have precise depth measurement using the DRO on the lathe. It's very fast to change from turning to drilling and you don't have to lug around the heavy tailstock all the time. And the tailstock is in the way anyways, constantly. So let's ask the other way, what good is the tailstock for? Don't take me too serious. That's just the way I like to work. The way I integrated the tool post drilling in my workflow works marvelous for me. It doesn't have to work for you. So with the three pound tool post that I had previously, I had a very, very short drill chuck. That worked very well and I liked it a lot. But for the multifix, something like this is not available. And also for the three pounds not available, I had to make it myself. For the Allura style tool posts, they make something like this and they sell it. A regular off the shelf item. Since nobody makes something like this for the multifix, I have to make it my own. And I, I played around with some options and what I came up with is, is this. This is a regular AXA size A boring bar holder. Just like this one. This is what I normally use. This is a boring bar holder with a Morse taper 2 sleeve in it. And this accepts regular Morse taper 2 tooling with a tang on the back. You have to screw to eject the tooling and change it out. So that's what I used to use. And that goes in a regular 30 millimeter boring bar holder. It's a very standard setup. Many people do this on multifix machines. But what I didn't like is the large overhang here. When changing from a, from a, let's take another holder. Let's say you have a, a regular turning tool here. Then you switch to the tool post drill chuck here. You have to move the carriage quite a bit. And just didn't like that too much. Also, this is bloody heavy. With, with all those added mass. And that then I thought let's get a a small zero to eight millimeter keyed chuck and put it inside of a boring bar holder. A keyed chuck of that size is is 29 and something millimeters in diameter. So this goes in the boring bar holder without interference. Then I thought I could make a shank 30 millimeter diameter that will be held inside of a boring bar holder. That's another problem. Also, I wanted to have a through hole because on a eight millimeter drill, for example, the shank is extremely long. And if you put it in here, it would stop about here. And I, I drilled, drilled through the chuck And also the shank is hollow and I will show you in a second how I did, how I managed that. So that way I can choke up on a drill extremely short. I could even go shorter and clamp on the flutes, but that's, uh, uh, let's call it bad practice. But the through hole options is very nice. Uh, sometimes you have tooling with very long shanks that you don't want to cut down. So that's that. Then I was thinking how I'm going to mount the drill chuck on this 30 millimeter shank. And I couldn't, normally these chucks have either a, a short taper on the inside or a thread. I purchased one with a thread because it didn't really matter because I wanted to drill a bolt hole circle on the back side of the chuck. Then I tapped it with an M3 thread six times. Following up with a shank 30 millimeter OD with the same hole pattern and then I was able to bolt the chuck to the shank with a small centering register, bolted it on from the back. Then I ended up with this contraption. It goes in a boring bore holder, uh, sits flush with the back. And sits in there like this. And I just had to mill a little notch in the, in the boring bar holder to allow for my key to go in and to be able to, to open and close the, the chuck. Just like this. A little bit slower than a keyed chuck, of course. Well, a uh, little bit slower than a keyless chuck. 
but um, I figured the, the advantage of having a very short projection drill chuck for the tool post might be an advantage to what I do. I will play with it, I will use it and then I will see if I like it if, and if this goes back to being a regular boring bar holder or if it becomes my standard drill chuck for the lathe. While I'm here on the topic of working with the solid tool post for drilling, I also had to change my workflow a little bit because in the recent time I had to do quite a bit of taper turning and also diamond turning using the compound slide. It means I had to put the compound slide back here behind the solid tool post. I had some aluminum T-slot covers in here and I had the, the T-nuts to mount the compound slide on here and the, these cuts, cutouts of these slots. So I pulled these out, put the compound on and screwed it in. That always meant to pull these out, clean everything. That was quite a bit of effort, to be honest. A little bit more effort than I was willing to do. So what I did instead, since this, this project with the diamond turning is uh, not going away pretty soon, I made new T-slots that fill the entire length of the T-slot and are ground almost flush to the top of the of the T-slot table here. Almost flush. They are below the surface which T-nut needs to be to work properly. I have seen people make T-nuts that are flush with the top of the table and uh, if you do that you have not understood how a T-nut works. So I have two M8 threads back here. Uh, there are just some socket, some, some, some cap screws in there to keep dirt out of them. We take a rack, clean everything off. Take a, take, take a stone, hit the surface quickly. Now I can just drop my compound slide on here. Like this. And I have a compound back here. And that allows me to do the, the little bit of taper turning that I have to do. I modified my tool post a little bit to give it a little bit more range for, for swiveling around. And I made a bent wrench, a 13 millimeter wrench to get in here to tighten the, the, uh, the nut down here. It's not pinned in place, so the, the angle scale on here is not accurate, but it's... Uh, if I do taper turning using the compound, I'm setting it with a sign bar anyways, because the angle on the part needs to be extremely accurate in, in the case of the parts I'm making currently. So that's my, that's my solution for, for taper turning. Somebody might argue to, well, darn, just get rid of the solid tool post and mount the compound slide back on here. And my answer to that is no, I will not, because the workflow with the solid tool post works extremely well for me. I don't need the compound slide a lot, but I need the solid tool post a lot. I like to use it for drilling. I like the preset tooling. I have 40 multi-fix holders at this point in time, and it's really nice to just drop in a tool holder, like <laughs> number 18, punch in the number and the DRO and the diameter of my of, of cut that this tool creates on the workpiece is <laughs> within very close tolerances already. Also, it's so much more rigid when parting 
since the tool post is also pinned in place, there is no danger of twisting or spinning the tool post. I know there are people who say don't pin the tool post because in case of a crash it will spin out of the way and do less harm. And I highly doubt that. The cases when I worked at lathes where the tool post was not pinned and I had the tool post spin on me, that was always catastrophic. It usually gets worse if it spins out of the way. If it doesn't move something, usually the parting blade or the insert or the insert pocket will just snap off and the tool holder is gone. But if, if, it's, if, if a tool holder like this spins into the chuck because it's pivoting around the central screw, uh, that, that gives me the... Uh, I get goosebumps from that. So, uh, that, that's my, that's the reasoning behind this. Uh, as I said, the setup probably works only for me, not for you, but uh, that's why I'm talking about it. So, also this is not a permanent installation back here. This will come off if I don't need it, but I can still reach my lubrication points in here with the oil gun to lubricate the the cross light if I have to but usually this comes off if I don't need it because it's just another thing to keep clean if I don't need it and to get rid of it uh, same way same way as before one screw two screws and you lift it off super fast super convenient <laughs> so I like it that way so that's, that's my solution for tool post drilling in 2023. I hope you enjoyed this little show and tell. Thank you all for watching and I'll be back.